last week we dealt with Hebrews 6 10 to 12 it says that God is not unjust he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him how did you show that love as you have helped his people and continue to help them we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized we do not want you to become lazy but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised you look at the whole concept of love it's a very 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 powerful thing because like i said everything else we need here on earth prayer we need here on earth faith we need here on earth afterlife we don't need faith we don't need prayer these are all things that helps us to journey in this life but love will always be and that is why those who don't have love will cannot enter the kingdom it can never happen because if you do that you're going to cause more problems after life when you study the scriptures you realize that jesus is actually fed up of all the breakaways and the alutes and everything else and this final move it will be final for eternity satan tried it and broke up heaven and according to the bible one third of the angels left they have become fallen angels that bother us through demonic activities and so on and so forth according to jude another set of angels left he didn't give us deep description but these angels seem to be more powerful than the satan and the guys he left with according to jude they have been kept in chains so they cannot operate unlike the satanic demons that left they can operate and they are the ones who experience them as demons and stuff like that but these ones are in everlasting chains of darkness they can just not move and we don't know what's going on in the realms of the spirit but god is saying that unforgiveness will not inherit so if you are somebody that always holds people and you don't forgive let me give you a better option go to the discos smoke drink do everything so when you go to hell at least you have a justification that satan will welcome you and you can enjoy yourself over there if there's any enjoyment there at all but you cannot waste your time in the church and hold people and i and i know believers as a pastor it's so sad who have sworn i will never forgive him for what he did to me i will never forgive her for what he did and blah 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 stop praying one thing that is very dangerous about God is that God has a long rope. So sometimes you'll be praying and praising and doing all those kind of stuff and you think God is in it. God is not in it. Because when you walk in unforgiveness, and those who walk in unforgiveness have the tendency to go and spoil our afterlife. Jesus has been killed, period. So he is not going to mess up our afterlife for us. We will not live afterlife for God to say that somebody has rebelled again. Now let us send the Holy Spirit to die or someone. No, it is settled. Amen. After rapture, there will be no aluta. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We are sick and tired. Me, my father, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus, we are sick and tired of aluta people. Amen. So repent, forgive. But the key thing that will be the ingredient for afterlife, if I now as well, but more so afterlife, is love. It says even the cobra will have love. Can you imagine? It says the child will be playing by the cobra's nest and there will be no problem. The lion will sleep by the, uh, what's it called again? Uh, is that the goat or the sheep? And there will be nothing. It's going to be very beautiful. So all those who don't qualify, make sure you become qualified. And the only way you can become qualified is the love. So let's see the exposition that Romans puts in place. Romans, by, by, by a lot of uh, uh, theologians and uh, Bible scholars, say that it is the best masterpiece on theology. And it's amazing that, that, that Romans is like that because Paul was writing to uh, uh, people that he has never met 
in his life. Uh, some of you know this because I taught it some time ago. You know, he, 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 he was writing to the uh, Christians uh, in the diaspora, in, in particularly Rome. And the reason why he was writing to them was he was uh, going to Spain to do some mission work. And for that reason, he needed some support. So uh, he wrote to the church in Rome uh, for some support and so on and so forth. And he had been introduced to the church in Rome by a gentleman and a lady called Priscilla and Aquila. And uh, uh, in future, we'll look at Roman as a book and uh, go and revisit some of the things we've done in the past. But in this particular text, he tries to give us the discourse of the love of God in two fashions. How it comes from him and how we must respond to him. And that love is that which we need. And that word is agape. He didn't play with philia. He didn't play with stodgy. He didn't play with any other word. He just dealt with agape. And he's saying that the Jews ought to respect the Greeks. And the Greeks ought to respect the Jews. And he uses the idea that God is no respecter of persons. But he preserved the Jews so that salvation can come. And once salvation came, it was opened up to everybody. When you study the text or study the Bible, it's a very interesting journey we have. You'll have Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve sin against God. God cleanses them at the source. He pours his blood. They become cleansed. Of course, the uh, uh, Bible says that the blood of Jesus was shed before the foundations of the earth. And then physically, he had to kill a sheep, I believe it was. The Bible says an animal, but a sheep. And um, then uh, they had Cain and they had Abel. And Abel was chosen to bear Jesus. And because Abel was chosen to bear Jesus, there was a righteous line and unrighteous line. And Satan touched Abel. God had to bring a new Abel. So that became Seth. And Seth became the righteous line. And throughout generation, we can map clearly the righteous line and the unrighteous line. So then after that, Seth then brought up, you have Enoch and all those, the son. And then the Bible teaches that you got to a point where Noah was selected. When Noah was selected, sin came, all those things, you know the story, and then uh, everybody died, and the whole journey started again. And when the journey started again, God had to then choose out of Noah's children a righteous line. It went on, and then God chose Abraham as a righteous line. And then he went on and God chose uh, between uh, uh, Isaac and Ishmael, Isaac. And then Isaac also had two, Esau and uh, uh, Jacob. God chose uh, Jacob. Jacob had 12. And among the 12, God chose uh, Judah. And then it continues like that. So it came until Jesus. Now all that God was doing was preserving the seed of the Messiah. Because the seed of the Messiah must be pure in order for the Messiah to come into our sphere. So as soon as the Messiah came, the righteous line and the unrighteous line bled. It became up. It went out. So that now the Messiah can pull the Jews and pull the Gentiles all together and make us one by the blood. So then Jesus became the, well, the new Adam. Some say new Adam. Other scriptures say the second Adam. Why? Because everybody now being born must be born into Adam. So Romans starts off chapter 8. If you go to uh, 30, 30, 30, 28, 20, 29, and 30, that is where the story is. So he's talking about the fact that we all have come to a place of understanding by God's grace and God's love. And now there is no more Jew, there is no more Gentile, but the blood of Jesus that puts us together. Now this love is what we want to understand today for the next few minutes and I'll take some questions. How he lavished this love on us. Then Paul asks, what then shall we say in response 
to these things. In response to what things? Read the uh, two chapters, sorry, the two verses before. Let's see the things he's talking about. Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, mm-hmm. who have been called according Number to Number one, his... it said God works for the good of those who do what? Let's just say it together. Those who do what? Love him. Those who do what? Love him. Agape. In other words, not those who are driven by emotions, but those who are driven by the intellect. Those who have made up their mind. Agape simply means making up your mind. Make up your mind. So you see, when you make up your mind, emotions don't come in. That's the way you love God. As a pastor, I can tell you, and I'm sure a lot of pastors here and, and the church leaders can tell you, that if we didn't make our mind up to serve, we would have run away to our professions. You have to make up your mind to serve. Because in this ministry, there's lots of disappointments. I'm not talking about this ministry, I'm talking ministry as in God's work. There's lots of disappointment. Dealing with human beings, there are lots of disappointments. So you have to make up your mind. Even in marriage, that is why God never said that husbands eros your wives. He said husbands what agape your wives. Why? Because there's lots of the dealing with human beings is a very interesting thing. You got to be covenantal in order to appreciate agape. With that covenant, you will not be able to. So he said, them that love him. So the reason why a lot of us don't experience miracles and don't experience things that we need to experience is because there is a lack of true love. We are most often driven by emotions and when the things are no longer there, we walk away because we have not made up our minds. That is why those who made up their minds, look, I'll give you a contrast between Luke and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Lot and uh, his uh, great, 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 great granddaughter, Ruth. Lot did not make up his mind. He was following and loving his uncle emotionally. And when there was a problem between his headsmen and his uncle's headsmen, he chose the best. It's sad, isn't it? When he was going to Sodom, the Bible says that he didn't go and live in Sodom. He pitched his tent close to Sodom. By the time the story was ending, he was actually in Sodom. What happened to his headsmen? His plenty cattle, camel, and everything. He lost everything, emotions, and just walked away. His great, great, great granddaughter, Ruth, because he gave birth to two cursed people, the Moabites and the Ammonites. And his great, great granddaughter, Ruth, turned to Naomi and he says, My love for you is not emotional, it is covenantal. That is agape. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. What you eat, I will eat. Where you sleep, I will sleep. I'm adding my own. <laughs> Where you die, I will die. Where you're buried, I'll be buried. I mean, that is agape. Put that one aside. David, his love was agape. He turns to Saul who was actually wanting to kill him. And he calls him my father. How many people, even, even, even in church, when, when you have pastor people and they have become your, their, their father and you disagree with them, they take their Bible and they disappear. You have not even offended them. You just disagree. They take their Bible. And sometimes if it's no you, sometimes they disagree with another church member and they take their Bible and they run. And these are the people who have sworn and they call you Papa and they have sworn. There are people who if you don't call you papa, they are more committed to you than those who call you papa. But the fact of the matter is that you go out because you are emotional. You are not connected to God. And that is why as research was made and it looks like the rapture is only about 20% of the church that is going to rapture. And I hope you are one of them. Hallelujah. Because again, me, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father, we don't want another Luther in heaven. 
we are tired of breakages and damages. <laughs> Amen. So we don't want any emotional person coming after life when we have all settled. We've cried. Bible says that we will dry our tears. We are all happy. We give ourselves high five and everything. Now it's over. And then somebody comes, mm, I am very upset. Why? You haven't told you. You are upset. No. We don't want, we don't want that in heaven. All right, so, 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 uh, Luke, Luke um, sorry, Lot did that. Ruth understood. David understood. He was not emotional. David was very, very covenantal. Something also that shocked me about David was even Mephibosheth. Remember whatever he did against him uh, when he went to live in Lodibar, he brought him to the table, and then Mephibosheth actually, cons he didn't actually conspire, but he was on the, on the side of those who did Aluta to, 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 to oust him just in case that they restore him as a king. And even after that all, David still loved him. He didn't love him because of emotions, because he has a covenant with his father, Jake, uh, um, Jonathan. So, so, so agape is a very interesting thing. That's the word he uses here. He said, for them that, read it again, for them that love. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. So there is a clause here. It's not everybody that all things are going to work together for their good. <laughs> it's a tough teaching, but we have to teach it. It's not everything. Not everybody qualifies for this test. Those who qualify for this test are those who work in agape. And so we all have to thrive to work in agape. Those who love him. Those who, 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 and the fact of the matter is that where is God that we might love him? He's not sitting somewhere. It is how we relate to his pastors, his members, his, his, his flock, his uh, fellow brothers and sisters, the poor, the needy, and so on. And go on, please. Who have been called according to his purpose? I've been called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. For those God foreknew, he also predestined. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So then he said that what then shall we say in response to these? So that these he's talking about is what has just been read. So he's linking what he's going to say now, what, what, what he has said before. About the fact that number one, you need to walk in agape. About the fact that number two, he has actually put structures in place to predestine you and walk your life into the place of grace. For the fact that he wants you to know that your love and relationship with him should not be based on emotions. Because those who walk in emotions, they run. I mean, we should not all walk in emotions, no, period. But when a man walks in emotions, it's very terrible. We shouldn't. <laughs> what then shall we say in response to this? If God be for us, who can be against us? That is the person who is responding in agape. If God be for us, who can be against us? Look at what it says. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us how many things? I had only five people. I had five people. I had ten people. I want you to say it with vim and vigor. So you are not limited in life. I want to encourage you, you are not limited in life. People will try to make you believe you are limited. Situations will like to tell you you are limited. You are not limited in life. Especially when you are walk in agape. When you have given your totality to him, you are not limited. He says, all things. Now when Paul puts these all things, I wish I was doing exegesis of this test and I would have gone deeper to, to, to give you some more details on what it means by all things. But basically, all things is all things. You have to fill in the blanks. You have to fill in the blanks. So, so, so he who did not spare his own son, because you see, one must die for the people before the people can get liberation. So it's a principle that they held in olden times before even Jesus. And so this same principle then had to happen in the life of Jesus. And for God 
to bring his son into this life for him to experience what sin is. For the Bible says that everything caused sin, he experienced it. Wow. And then on the cross, you, your sin and my sin was imputed on him. For the first time in history, the father looks at his son and all he could see is the enormity of sin that he never committed. And he turned his back, not because he disowned his son, but because he wanted to understand the gravity of sin. And his son had to scream, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, Father, my father, why have you forsaken me? A better translation will say, why are you walking away? But he didn't forsake him. It must be done that your sins and my sins will be. And he said, this is the toughest you can have. Dying on the cross is so degrading that a Roman citizen that commits the worst atrocity you can think of is not allowed to die by crucifixion. Crucifixion was actually reserved as a shame and disgrace for non-Romans. So you can have a Syrian rapist, a Syrian murderer, I mean, I mean, I mean, horrible, horrible, horrible thief. So long as he is a Roman citizen, they will not let her die by that death. It is a death where you are put naked, completely naked, ding down naked. They don't even cover your mouth. For decency, when we see Jesus on the cross, we put something over there. But that's not how he was crucified. That is why the cross with the Jesus symbol on it is a curse. And a lot of times we encourage people, don't wear that. Wear the empty one. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. But even with the cross itself, there's a lot of arguments on that. Some believe that it was just a a tree. Some believe that we're not going to go into that. But the truth of the matter is that if he was able to allow his son to go through this terrible, 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 terrible death, how much more will he not graciously give us all things? Anytime you are the crossroads of life, and you feel that life is beating on you, think about this test. Seriously. You have some inspiration. It will give you some impetus to jump over the problem. Hallelujah. And that's how sometimes we all work, isn't it? You hear somebody has said something bad about you, and you sit down and say, no, that cannot be true. It's not the same person who did this for me, who did that, who did that, who did that. And you look at that, and you can deduce from his relationship with you that that cannot be true. And then you investigate and you realize that it was not true. And the only reason why you could say that cannot be true is that you are analyzing from an experiential point of view. That if he did that and he did that, the guy just came here. How, no, he can't say that. Then you realize that it is right. He didn't say it. Somebody is trying to. The same scenario here. If he gave his son and he died this horrible death, on the cross, with the blood piercing on the side, shouting a lawyer, lawyer, lama sabatani, and all that kind of stuff. He say, This is the highest I can do. How much more? It's like King Kong uprooting skyscrapers, and then you bring him a small car. If I can uproot a skyscraper, what is a small car? So he's saying that if I can uproot a skyscraper, then your problem is a small car. Have faith. Amen. I say half word, faith. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? That is why you don't have to let anybody work witchcraft on you. The word witchcraft is just, say, just simply put, accuser. 
Satan, the word Satan means accuse, to accuse. That's the word, the meaning of Satan, accuser. So anybody who accuses somebody falsely or just in the business of accusing is Satan miniature. It's a miniature Satan. Sometimes we need to use the right words in order to make people sit up. Because when somebody is doing accusation and going on and accusing people and accusing people, it's always fine because the English word, this and, but if we understand that the word Satan means accuse, then you realize that the person will be going around Satan in, Satan in, rather than saying accusing, accusing, Satan. Then you have to be able to stand against that spirit. Accuser. He's saying that who can bring an accusation against you? Let me backtrack and show you some interesting thing here. We have said that the opposite of love is hate. But that is English language. The actual opposite of love is witchcraft. Anytime you are loved, people try to work witchcraft to stop your benefits of love. I'll break it down. So, you love your church. To get you out of the church, somebody will have to accuse and say bad things about your church in order for your love to go down so you can walk away. That is witchcraft. You meet somebody you love and then somebody says that, ha, ah, this might result in marriage. Somebody has to say something. Oh, you know this person that you say you love. You don't know. You know his background. Do you know he was married before? Do you know that he's a thief? Do you know that he's a widow? Do you know that he's a, he's a this? Do you know that uh, his family, this is what goes on in his family? Have you investigated? There's all these sicknesses and diseases in his family. Do you know this? Do you know that? Witchcraft. Joseph's brothers worked witchcraft against him. And the ultimate for witchcraft is death. Because as soon as you are loved, accusation goes for you to die. And that is why Jesus Christ eventually died. Because he was declared as the son of God, the son whom God loved. And so witchcraft went against him by virtue of accusations. And as soon as the accusations went, it ended up in death. But that is what happens to everybody that is loved. Joseph's one, it ended up in death, but fortunately it's not his body that died. But they created a, they created a death impression for his father. Anybody that accuses somebody to you, especially falsely, they are planning your death. The reason you need to understand this, and please pay attention to this very carefully, nobody is an island. I repeat, nobody is an island. God will use institution, a person, a mother, a father, a pastor, a friend, a brother, to bless you. The day you pray that God, I need a job, the job come from heaven. God used someone. The day you pray that, Lord, I need a husband. Did husband come from heaven? God used someone. The day you pray that I need a, a business. Did business come from heaven? God used someone. So what, they have, though, what those who work in witchcraft know is that they are able to discern who is loved. And then they try to put holes in the love by accusations. As though to say that he doesn't deserve that love, she doesn't deserve that love, let us do something. And their ultimate aim is to kill. That is what the Bible says that suffer not a witch to live. Because by stealth or by purpose or by default, a witch is there to work your demise. So anybody who doesn't love you does not necessarily hate you. He's on a witchcraft mission to cause your demise. If God has planted you in a church, when you disconnect with the church, you die. And that is what he wants you to do. If he's connected you with somebody through whom some grace and power will come into your life, 
they try to break you from that person and funny enough they reconnect you to those who are not part of the mapping of your journey of life so that you can be cut off so we have to be very careful and that is why sometimes you don't express your love openly to some people because as soon as your love becomes open straight away the witches raise their head this is the one whom and that is why Jesus kept saying don't tell anybody who I am it's not because he was afraid it's because his time hasn't come because when the time comes they must know and they must wear the witchcraft and they must bring the accusation so he can die so he can fulfill purpose if they get to know it quickly then that will mess up the purpose and that is why sometimes mothers fathers you may have three children four children five children you may like one better than all of them don't make it known because you are causing the demise of the person that you love in fact even pastors when you make you 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 you, you openly declare uh, who you love in the church and who you don't love straight away you have caused so as soon as somebody shows their love for you increase your prayer especially if the person showing their love for you is a person of substance like a father showing love for you like a president showing love for you like you know politics what happened to Theresa May's best guy he's out now Tony Blair you know how it was this with Tony, uh, Manderson and stuff they took, the, they took the guy out they took the guy out quick the guy worked his way uh, and came back a few years later and they worked him out again it is a principle of life the opposite of love is witchcraft and people just do that in order to stop so when somebody loves you don't say oh, pastor loves me and, and my daddy loves me and uh, the president loves me no 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 as soon as that is declared straight away so as soon as Jesus it was declared that he's the beloved of the father straight away accusation started and remember when they brought him there he started uh, Pilate asked what has he done all these accusations because it's witchcraft there's no substance to it there was no substance to Joseph there was no substance to anybody you can think of David the same thing witchcraft there's no substance to it so he was sitting there scratching his head and his wife came and tells him that listen this guy had a dream about him he's a righteous person don't do, 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 do. and finally he didn't know what to do and he said okay it is in your 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 custom that every year or whatever we release uh, a prisoner to you so so i'm going to give you two prisoners please tell me because thinking that since this person is a thief and this person isn't they will say that release they shouted release barnabas funny enough do you realize that barnabas was also called jesus his actual name was Jesus Barabbas. So we have Jesus Barabbas and we have Jesus Christ. So both of them were Jesus. And they went for the fake Jesus. And then he had to. So the man wasn't clear about that. But the witchcraft was shouting. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. My brother, my sister who can lay any charge against those whom god has chosen so as soon as you get chosen people are going to start laying charge against you but because god has gone ahead to let us understand and he knows that as soon as he loves somebody witchcraft will work against that person as soon as he loves he brings the protection so he said, the journey you take in life, he said, you just keep going. For I, the Lord, will be your water, your rare God. So don't worry. The witches will not succeed. I had only five people. I had only ten people. Anytime God declares his love for you, there will be those who will be upset. And they will try to bring condemnation. But let me tell you, it will not succeed. I said, it will not succeed. Hallelujah. God knows it. He goes ahead. He only allowed his son. 
He allowed accusations because he knows that he was going to sacrifice him for you and I. So he allowed it. But post that, that is the key. Listen to this. It says that no one can. And look at what it says here. It is God who justifies. Oh, I can stay on that for the whole night. It is God who justifies. So you are justified. Oh, I heard only two people. I, I said you are justified. Amen. The love God has for you makes you justified. You ate the bread on the table. Your brother comes and says, you shouldn't have ate the bread. Daddy comes and daddy says that he is justified. What's your problem? I bought the bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. Satan comes and he says that, but, 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 but how can you call him your, your son? Uh, uh, I know what he did last night. I know what he did three years ago. I know this and I know that. And, and, and they say Jesus will be just looking on and watching on. And he speaks and speaks and says, as soon as he puts a dot to it, he just tells me, he says, yes, I know. He is justified. Hallelujah. It is, it is amazing, isn't it? When somebody comes to, 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 to uh, 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 grasp somebody to you, have you noticed that? It comes and says, yeah, you know, the person says, says, says oh, I know about it. I, I, if I, I allowed him to. Then he sees his head. Oh, it's just exactly the principle. <laughs> you know, they come and they bring all the accusations. No, 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 no. Jesus said, okay, you finish. He's justified. He said, you are justified. And that is why you should not let your heart condemn you of whatever wrong you have done, especially when you have confessed it, you have gone to God and have splitted the blood. It's in the sea of forgetfulness. Just move on with your life. Amen. Who then is the one who condemns? Who then? So that's why they say the love, the agape, the first thing it does in this test is that it silences the power of witchcraft. It silences the power. Somebody says silence the power of witchcraft. Hallelujah. I, I like in my, in my, in my, in my, in my, one of the, my, my native languages, it says, it says, that means that he, he crushes the mouth of the accuser. I like the language. It's a very powerful language. It, it, it's, like, it's like you put a gag. You put a gag in the mouth of the accuser. That's what it says. Because it's the mouth they use for the witchcraft. You, everybody is selling and nobody is buying your tomatoes. Nobody is buying your way. Everybody is selling. They, 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 and you don't know. Because there's word around that you are using juju. So you don't know. Every man comes into your life and they go. They come into your life and they go. You don't know. Your own friends are parading bad stories about you. You don't know. That is witchcraft. But God says that I'm bringing a gag. I gag them in the mouth. Then they open their mouth, their teeth will come out. And they'll start speaking like this. FCSM. Somebody say amen. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding. You see how the love works for us? Apart from the agape he's thrown to us and lavished that with his love, he says that that is not enough. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I, standing in the gap. Oh, so you can sleep well. I didn't hear you. Amen. I say, amen. amen. You can sleep well. Hallelujah. Christ died. More than that, who was raised to life? It is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Then, if the intercession then is going on, and we are walking in agape, and he is also watching over us with agape, and all the accusers, the accusers, and some of you have many accusers. Yes. Thank God sometimes he blesses us with good wives and good husbands and stuff like that. If not, see, you, have some, you give somebody a lift and somebody just concludes. You are a believer. You cannot see your brother on the street and just leave the brother like that. Should 
everything have something under it. You hug somebody, hey. You don't hug somebody, hey. You smile, ah. You don't smile, eh. You know, and it's like, it's like they sit down and they map your life. And everything you do, they have to say something about it. And it's like they, they have a sore life. And they have become secretaries for Satan. I like the way the Bible says, he got them. Put, I was watching a film and, and the guy was getting, the, the child was dying. And he said, put a sock in it. I love it. Sometimes that's what God will do to those witches. Ah, nobody's hearing you. Nobody. Better shut up. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But even if somebody heard them, your stand will still be protected. You didn't hear me. I said your stand will still be protected. Amen. Hallelujah. 25, 35. Let me finish quickly and take some two questions. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It is this that justifies everything I've spoken to you earlier about. It says, shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sorrow. It says, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day. You remember why we say face death? That's what I told you earlier. We face death all day because the witches are out to get us. Because God has declared his love for us. We have become like Joseph. As soon as the father declares his love for us and gives us a coat of many colors, straight away. They, so all day, they're looking for an opportunity. All day. All day. All day. Not some day. All day. So you have to be on your toes. For your sake, we face death all day. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. Oh, I think I have to shift the rest to next time. Because I, I want to take five minutes and deal with this through him who loved us. Have you noticed what it says in your scripture? It is a very true reflection. It's a very true reflection of the original. It didn't say who loves us. It didn't say who loved us. He said, who loved? What he's trying to tell you is that the matter is concluded. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, there's nothing you're going to do that is going to change it. It's like he loved and puts it in a vault and he shut the vault. And he only has the combination lock. I mean the combination number to the lock. That's what he's saying here. It's not even present continuous for you to think that at some point it will just cut off. It's loved. It's concluded. And that loved, it's not like you and I who love with emotion sometimes. And therefore when we don't feel emotional towards somebody, we just walk. He has done it. So now it's all about enjoying that fellowship and that relationship. Amen. For me, this calls for hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, to God's of that, it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Because for somebody who is not loving you, but loved you, and placed his love for you in the vote where it can never be changed. That is why I can boldly stand here and say that if you are truly saved, you are forever saved. There is no point where you should fret and question your afterlife because when he concludes the matter, it is truly concluded. Let's take some questions. Our mission is raising overcomers, setting the captives free. Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take with the Word of God as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness. And we hope you've been blessed by today's message.
worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or give us a call on 0207 You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org and remember there is progress in freedom.